Welcome to the Medal of Honor induction ceremony in honor of Captain Florent A. Groberg. Captain Groberg was awarded our nation's highest and most prestigious award for valor by the President of the United States, the Medal of Honor. This morning, he will formally be inducted into the Pentagon's most sacred place, the Hall of Heroes. Our hosts for today's ceremony are the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Ashton B. Carter, the Acting Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Eric K. Fanning, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Mark A. Milley, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, Daniel Daly. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Andre McRae and the invocation which will be delivered by Chaplain Paul Hurley. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? the home of the brave. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather in your presence and we recall the words of the psalmist, you have been our stronghold and the rock of our refuge. Lead us always to give strength to the weary, to comfort those who grieve. We give you thanks for the courage of our soldiers who stand to protect our freedom so that we may all enjoy the fruits of peace. Defend them in the hour of battle, both afar and at home, and may they defeat the wickedness and the snares of those who seek to do evil kindle in all of us a desire to bring honor to their sacrifices. All of this we ask in the name of the great friend and Lord of all. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense. Good morning, General Milley, Acting Secretary Fanning, senior leaders of the department, civilian and military, and especially to the Medal of Honor recipients here today. It's an honor to have you all with us. I want to express at the beginning my particular appreciation for Captain Groberg's parents, Larry and Clara. Though you raised your son in different places, across the country, around the world, you instilled in him an abiding sense of service, developed in him an unbounded sense of honor. And if you listen closely to what Flo has said, you'll get a sense that one person above all developed his toughness, and of course that's his mother, Clara. So when army officials explained he would be sent to San Antonio for his rehabilitation rather than closer to home, she knows what's coming. <laughs> Captain Groberg had to make one thing clear, and this is a quote from him. If you thought the enemy was bad in Afghanistan, he told them, wait until my mother finds out you're sending me to Texas. 
Ultimately, it has to be ultimately, of course, the Army thought better of it. <laughs> Sending Captain Grover to Walter Reed, where he received world-class care over nearly three years of intensive rehabilitation. In our visits to Walter Reed in the past few years, my wife Stephanie and I have so often been impressed by the quality of care there. And of course, what impresses us most and what truly inspires us there is the spirit and resilience of our warriors there. Warriors like Captain Florent Groberg, who against all odds can stand with us today. And I want to thank the members of Captain Groberg's extended family his military family, men who were his brothers on the battlefield and who remained close to him in recovery. From Platoon Sergeant Brian Brink, who captain, carried Captain Groberg to safety, to Specialist Dan Balderrama, who immediately treated his life-threatening wounds, to Sergeant Andrew Mahoney, who helped confront the suicide bomber, to Private First Class Ben Secor, and Eric Ochart, who carried members of the team to safety, each of you helped save lives. You not only witnessed Captain Groberg's courageous decisions, you contributed to them. In so many ways, you were the reason he made them. I've made a lot of visits to Afghanistan over the last several years, enough to understand that the mountains and valleys in the country's northeast where Captain Groberg and his team patrolled in 2012 were a forbidding frontier. So while the medal is received by one, honor, courage, and valor were required by all. And above all, as Captain Groberg has so often emphasized, we have a duty to honor those who can be with us only in spirit and memory. To the families of those who gave their lives serving with Captain Groberg, here also, Command Sergeant Major Kevin Griffin, Major Thomas Kennedy, Air Force Major Walter Gray, and Ray Guy Abdel Fattah, you have our deepest sympathy and appreciation. And try as we may, and try as we do, we can never fully understand the weight of your loss. We do know, however, we fully know what your loved one's sacrifice meant to this country and to those they served alongside. Honoring and remembering the fallen is part of our sacred trust. And so too is honoring the exceptional courage of those who survived them, those who carry forward their memory of living among us. As we reflect today upon those fateful moments in Kunar province, we can clearly see how Captain Groberg went above and beyond the call of duty. As it reads on his Medal of Honor citation, and it is written this way on every Medal of Honor citation, he distinguished himself conspicuously by his gallantry. We also see how Captain Groberg's courage stood in stark contrast to the cowardice of the suicide bomber he confronted. While this enemy was willing to die so he could harm others, Captain Groberg was willing to risk his life to save others. While the enemy was motivated by self-delusion, Captain Groberg was driven by selfless service. And while the enemy was sent to his death by a movement that cares nothing for life, Captain Groberg was standing for the great values of the greatest nation as one of the finest fighting force the world has ever known and was rescued by brothers who put themselves in danger, refusing to leave them behind. In that moment of testing, we learned about Captain Groberg's courage, but also about his character, which defines the American soldier. While we reflect upon what make, made Captain Groberg's actions so truly exceptional, we should also remember that all that he shares with so many from his generation, over 14 years of war, whether in Kunar or Kurangal, Baghdad, or Basra. Hundreds of thousands of Captain Groberg's peers have served with honor, courage, and excellence. Each of our lives and the nation, life of this nation richer because of their example. 
in becoming the 10th living American to receive the Medal of Honor for his service in Afghanistan, Captain Groberg embodies the highest values of these Americans, men and women who came of age in the shadow of the 9-11 attacks. He attended high school just a short drive from where we stand today, graduating in the same year this building and our nation were attacked. It was a far different time then and in so many ways. Flo was a different person. As President Obama noted yesterday, Flo's coaches from high school and college recall one particular aspect of his character that would endure. They remember that it wasn't Flo's performance in individual races and events where he showed his greatest potential, though that was great. It was when he ran with the baton and passed it forward. He was a member of a relay team where he proved his great determination. And what was true on the track was true for Flo when he considered a career. After graduating from college, he held a couple of different jobs, but none inspired him. It was only when Flo found a team where he could make a difference, where he found the Army, that he discovered both his career and a calling. And for Flo, there was one reason why committing to the U.S. Army would have meant more to him than to some others. Even before he could wear a uniform, he had to make a significant sacrifice. He had to make a conscious choice to leave the French citizenship of his birth behind. Yesterday, when President Obama placed the blue ribbon around his neck at the White House, Captain Groberg became the first foreign-born recipient of the Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War. But if you study the biographies of the nearly 3,500 Medal of Honor recipients, you'll find that Captain Groberg follows in the footsteps of a long line of heroes, heroes who gave up important ties to the past to fight for America's future. Captain Groberg has joined more than 20%, as it turns out, of all Medal of Honor recipients who were born on foreign shores. So Captain Groberg chose to commit himself completely to this country. He chose repeatedly to lead his fellow soldiers with excellence. He chose to test himself against the absolute test earning the Ranger Cadab. And at the moment of greatest testing, he made the most selfless and courageous choice of all, to run toward the direction of danger, to willingly put his life on the line for the sake of his brothers. It is because our service members make these courageous choices, both in this time and across the generations, that we have the chance to be free. As we consider the more than 3,400 names and 150 years of history chronicled in the Hall of Heroes, we begin to appreciate something Captain Groberg learned long ago. It's not in a single sprint or even a test of our endur uh, individual endurance where we show our true strength. As a nation, we derive our greatest strength from how each of us carries the baton forward. Now Americans in each generation pass the torch of freedom onward. As the Roman historian Tacitus wrote nearly 2,000 years ago, in valor there is hope. So as we honor Captain Groberg's valor today, we too have hope that the liberty and security we enjoy today will be passed forward to future generations. Thank you, Captain Groberg, for your courageous actions, for your example and for your exceptional service to our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Acting Secretary of the Army. Good morning. For more than 1,000 years, the ancient Romans celebrated the military achievements of their best soldiers with something known as a triumph. A triumph was a public celebration of epic proportion. Trumpeters, parades, games, and festivals. The celebrated soldier rode in a four-horse chariot through the streets of Rome in procession with his army, captives, and the spoils of his war. Flo, I'm not sure what the motor pool arrived with this morning picking you up today, but I'm guessing it was our modern version of a chariot, a minivan. And for that, I apologize. 
Regardless, it's great to see you again. To everyone here, welcome. This, too, is a great celebration. It is a great moment for America and for our Army. Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. General Milley, Sergeant Major Daly, Medal of Honor recipients, thank you all for your presence as well. And Carson, Flo's amazing girlfriend, my former neighbor, welcome. Keep in mind I'm saying this about a Medal of Honor recipient, but Flo, you are dating up. <laughs> and a special welcome to Flo's brothers and sisters in arms and the families of the fallen, the Gold Star families here today. It speaks to the strength of the bond you share that so many of you are here to join in this moment with your teammate and friend. Flo, I am honored to be a part of your celebration, this well-deserved triumph. I am also in awe that despite your extraordinary honors and accolades, you continue to display deep humility and never forget to express deep gratitude for those you served alongside. In or out of uniform, you continue to do our Army proud. Celebrations like these are important to our nation and to the Army because they act as an outlet for the pride and admiration shared by so many. They provide us a chance to reaffirm the basic values that the military as a profession of arms holds so dear. They also serve as a reminder to those whose freedoms are defended that each and every day in more than 150 locations around the world, often unseen and usually unsung, the men and women of the United States Army, alongside their Marine, Air Force, and Navy brethren and sisters, are always on point, demonstrating their devotion to serving causes greater than themselves and to carrying out America's commitment to peace and security across the world. These soldiers do these things not for glory, not for empire, not for treasure, not even for personal triumph, but because they are the right things, the difficult things that must be done. Like the brothers in arms who served and protected one another in Kanar province, like the soldiers who flow selflessly sought to protect, they look out for one another because they know, like all Americans, that we are in this together. Our soldiers make choices based on deeply ingrained values, taught in basic training, fostered by education and time and service, and developed and demonstrated in combat. The Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I thought about finding seven stories to illustrate how Flo exemplifies each of these values, but he, he displayed them all simultaneously in one day in one brief but decisive moment in Afghanistan three years ago. I've had the honor to spend time with Flo over these past few weeks, and because of that humility I've seen firsthand, I was not surprised when Flo expressed a set of conflicted emotion about today's celebration. Imagine, he said, being honored for the worst day of your life. Even though Flo and his team defeated the enemy that day, he lost, as he told me, four of his brothers. Command Sergeant Major Kevin Griffith, Major Thomas Kennedy, Major Walter Gray, and Regai Abdel Fattah. They are the true heroes, he said. They sacrificed everything for their country. That loss is deep, and it is real. The scarred silver bracelet on Flo's right wrist is a testament to his devotion. It's a reminder that soldiering is a family business. These men and women eat, sleep, train, and fight together, and tragically, some make the ultimate sacrifice. Together, they are selflessly devoted to causes bigger than themselves. They are, in every sense of the phrase, brothers and sisters. Flo, I know you're conflicted about this day, but thank you for allowing us to honor you. I know that having some of the family members of the fallen here in the audience is both welcome and wonderful for Flo. Since returning from Afghanistan, he spent time with them, sharing in their grief, rejoicing in their memories, and living lives worthy of their sacrifice. I often ask myself where we find such men and women of unshakable personal courage and conviction. People with such loyalty and respect for one another and for their country that they volunteer to step out into a dark and dangerous world for the sake of others, for the values we believe in. How else can you explain what Flo did that day, his eight second sprint into destiny? The answer is simple. They are the very essence of the American spirit found in every village, town, and city in this nation. They are the embodiment of the ideas and ideals that we as a people hold so dear. But they are unique and special people, as Flo's actions attest, that they would voluntarily stand up over and over again and say, send me, is a powerful reminder to us all. And selflessly stand up they do. For as Flo so simply but eloquently put it, if not me, then who? 
Men and women like this are not just in the army, they are the army. Thankfully for us, Flo came to this army brimming with similar values, instilled in him by his parents, Clara and Larry Groberg, whom I've also had the pleasure of getting to know. Thank you very much for being here today. Brigadier General Mingus, who's also here today, Flo's, Flo's former commanding officer and one of the survivors of that awful day, said of him and his family, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Clara and Lara, Larry, thank you both for raising such a fine man. Today is your triumph as well. That Flo loves his army and his teammates, there is no doubt. Since he was nine years old, all he ever wanted to be was an American soldier, he said. A helper, a defender, a trusted and loyal teammate. He proved his mettle at places like Infantry Officer Basic Course, Mechanized Leaders Course, U.S. Army Airborne and U.S. Army Ranger Schools. His last test was as the Brigade Personal Security Detachment Commander for the 4th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division. Brigadier, Mingus, Brigadier General Mingus handpicked him for this post. Looking back, the very best times of his life, he said, were when he was on deployment with his soldiers. They knew they were making a difference in this world, and they were doing it together. And while Flo's dream of one day commanding an infantry rifle company will not come to pass, thankfully for us, he will continue to serve his country in a new civilian role here at the Pentagon. As it has been said, there are many ways to serve, but guiding us is the same spirit. Or as Flo put it, I'm on the same journey, I just got on a different boat. Flo, Captain Groberg, thank you for your journey. Thank you for living out the Army's values. Thank you for your honorable service. And thank you above all for taking care of your brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Staff of the Army. Uh, thank you all again uh, for being here. Secretary Carter, thank you and uh, a few words. And Secretary Fanning, those are uh, remarkable as well. And thank you uh, both and leaders and general officers and family members and friends. Uh, thanks all for being here uh, to honor uh, not only Flo, but his entire family and all his teammates, and those of the fallen and those of the survivors. Uh, thanks all for being here. Uh, a, a word on his family. Uh, Flo, uh, as has been mentioned, uh, gets his character, his courage, as we all do, uh, from our families uh, and our teammates. Uh, in Flo's case, he comes from a long and distinguished line of combat veterans and heroes. Uh, Flo's grandfather served with the French Army in Vietnam, and then later uh, joined in the uh, Algerian uh, uh, quest for freedom in their independence. Uh, Flo's mother was the first woman commissioned in the Algerian military, and Flo's uncle uh, was a commando in the Algerian military, murdered by terrorists not too long ago. And Flo's fa or father, uh, in his own quiet way, served his country in many, many places uh, around the world. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge all of their family as well and, and just give them another round of applause for all you've done. <clears throat> and joining us uh, today is a, a distinguished group of uh, other Medal of Honor winners. Uh, amongst them is uh, retired Lieutenant General Foley, and if we can point him out somewhere. I'm not sure where you're at, General Fuller. There you are. We can just... <laughs> General Foley earned his uh, Medal of Honor in 1966 near Quang Dao Tieng uh, in Vietnam, leading a rifle company of the 27th Infantry Wolfhounds. And uh, thanks, sir, uh, for being here. And we appreciate that. You know, Captain Groberg is uh, a representation of all that is best in all of our soldiers, as pointed out, he's humble, uh, he has deep humility, uh, he's trustworthy, and he's a selfless person, and one who earns all of our respect, not by wearing the uniform per se, but through his demonstration of dedication uh, to our profession and fellow soldiers uh, that really epitomizes the warrior ethos and 
the Army values that Secretary Fanning just pointed out. And he and his teammates that served with him in the 4th Infantry Division uh, and others from other units, such as the 502nd out of the 101st, uh, they are really the, the strength uh, that is our Army and the strength uh, that's our nation. And their commitment and their courage to fight for a cause greater than themselves, to fight for the ideals of our nation. It's evident in all of our soldiers, and we are proud to be among them today. Uh, Captain Groberg never quit, and when facing grave danger, he put the mission first, and he never, ever accepted defeat and never once thought of himself. Today, he thinks of his fallen comrades. He has been there for the living, and he's there today also for those who passed. He's there for them yesterday, and he will be there for you forever. And for the families of the fallen on that day, this is a special day of remembrance, a special day to honor Captain Groberg and the other members, a special day to honor your fallen loved ones. There are no words that I or anyone else can ever express except to say thank you for their sacrifice. Also among us today are surviving members of that day from the 4th Division, from the 101st, and from other units. And if you were there that day that Captain Groberg earned the Medal of Honor, I'd like you to please stand to be recognized. As uh, President Obama said yesterday, Captain Groberg trained all his life uh, for the Army and for this day. And because of Flo uh, winning matters, and he learned to win at the University of Maryland and in high school and from his family, and he learned in college track how to win. And on that day, on the 8th of August, 2012, winning is exactly what Flo did. Just a month after Flo pinned on the rank of captain, and six months into his second deployment into Afghanistan. It was a day not much different than any other day. On that day, lives would be changed forever as 28 coalition and Afghan National Army personnel, their families, and their friends would find out. But it was also a day of courage, of leadership, and of commitment to protecting and defending those who serve together. If you close your eyes and you can imagine that you're in the Hindu Kush, you receive an op order as a personal security detachment to go out and escort two brigade commanders on a meeting with a local governor. You put on your kit, you do your pre-combat inspections, and you move forward to a couple of UH-60s. You load the UH-60s, the rotors are turning, and you take off. And you land in an LZ, you exit under the rotor wash, you get off the aircraft, you make a dash, take a knee, check the surrounding area, and your eyes are darting everywhere, looking for threats. Captain Groberg was leading that movement, from forward operating base FIAS to the provincial governor's compound in Asadabad. This was in the Konar province of Afghanistan. It was August, and Asadabad was the capital of Konar right near the Pakistani border. It was hot that day. It was in the morning, but the temperatures had already risen to 100 degrees. The humidity was unbearable. The sweat was pouring off underneath their, underneath their vests and their sappy plates. And at the crossroads of the Kunar and Pesh rivers, in very mountainous terrain, ranging from 2,000 feet to well over 10,000 feet, you're in the land of the Hindu Kush. You're in the land of Rudyard Kipling. It's a beautiful region with spectacular and rugged terrain. And you're in a city and a community of about 480,000 Afghans. This particular region has known conflict since 300 years before the birth of Christ. 
when it was invaded by Macedonians and then later there was an invasion by Russians and then we went to the assistance after 911. It's where insurgents have been known over so many millennia. It's where drug traffickers and weapons traffickers walk the trails. And it's where a young captain acted to save the lives of his men. Captain Groberg, serving as a personal security detachment commander for Task Force Mountain Warrior, 4th Brigade Combat Team, working under Colonel Len, then Colonel Mingus. He and his soldiers were trained, and they were ready to protect lives of those in their patrol. After dismounting those helicopters, they dropped the party off in an adjacent position next to the local governor's compound, and the team then conducted a foot patrol to establish security en route to the compound. As they approached the mud brick buildings, they arrived at a choke point, a location on the ground where movement slows down, and those of us in the military know that this is where ambushes so often happen. There were a few Afghans out that morning doing their normal daily activities, tending to the farms and bringing in some crops, getting water, setting fires for the morning breakfast. And two motorcycles approached. They approached the choke point. They stopped for a moment. Then they departed in the opposite direction from the patrol. Captain Groberg and others saw their movement and thought something was out of place. And then they noticed an individual, not a member of the patrol, was walking. And he was walking backwards towards the formation. As the formation continued to move toward the governor's compound, the individual made an abrupt movement and moved himself closer to the patrol. Captain Groberg noticed an abnormal bulge under the individual's clothing. Flo, at that point, <clears throat> moved to place himself between the individual and one of the brigade commanders he was charged to protect. And then he rushed. He rushed to the individual. And he used his body to push the suspect away from the patrol. He asked Sergeant Mahoney to move up and assist him. And at this moment, Captain Groberg confirmed that the bulge was, in fact, a suicide vest. With complete disregard for his own life, Flo Groberg, with the assistance from Sergeant Mahoney, physically pushed that suicide bomber away from the patrol. He pushed the individual so hard that they all fell to the ground, and upon hitting the ground, the individual released the trigger on the suicide vest, detonating the device. That blast robbed America of four great heroes, and it severely wounded 15 others, and among them was Captain Groberg, who was thrown almost 15 feet into a nearby culvert. And at that time, a second unnoticed suicide bomber then detonated his suicide vest prematurely, we think as a result of Captain Groberg's actions to stop the first bomber. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that Captain Groberg and his personal actions saved the lives of many, many other soldiers. On that day in August, Flo Groberg demonstrated incredible competence and courage. His actions are representative of his commitment to his fellow soldiers and our partners in multinational forces in Afghanistan and also to our partners in the State Department, USAID. Captain Groberg has brought honor to our Army and to our nation. And it was not the American uniform that mattered that day to Captain Groberg. It was the men and women that he was with. The men and women that he trained with and lived with, that he ate with and that he fought with. It's that unwavering commitment to each other which makes the Army so strong. And that strength of character that Captain Groberg showed that day, we are all so incredibly humbled 
to honor you. He joins in that rare fraternity of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in the Medal of Honor Society who have demonstrated uncommon valor and incredible courage. And I know that Captain Groberg doesn't accept this honor for himself, and he would want you to know that it's not about him. And let me paraphrase what he said just the other day. He said, sir, I'm here with you breathing, able to keep watching football on Sundays. But they are not. Their families have to live with that. I want to honor them the best way I can and hopefully live my life in the best way possible. And I want everybody to know what incredible people these other guys were and what their families still go through every day. And by honoring Captain Groberg, Captain Flo Groberg, it gives us an opportunity to honor not only him, but all the members of his team and all of those who fell that day. And indeed, all of those who raise their right hand every day to defend the Constitution of this Republic. Captain Groberg is the epitome of competence and commitment and character. He is much, much more than just a uniform. He has demonstrated his leadership in the crucible of ground combat, and his leadership directly saved lives. He was ready that day to do what had to be done, and we honor him today. And we honor those who fought alongside him, and we honor those who fell. Flo, you, and your teammates are what makes the Army strong. Secretary Carter, Acting Secretary Fanning, Sergeant Major of the Army Daily, and Captain Groberg will now join General Milley on stage for the induction ceremony. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, has awarded, in the name of Congress, the Medal of Honor to Captain Florent A. Groberg. Captain Groberg distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life, above and beyond the call of duty, while serving as a personal security detachment commander for Task Force Mountain Warrior. 4th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, during combat operations against an armed enemy in Asadabad, Kunar Province, Afghanistan, on August 8, 2012. On that day, Captain Groberg was leading a dismounted movement consisting of several senior leaders, including two brigade commanders, two battalion commanders, two command sergeant major, and an Afghanistan National Army Brigade commander. As they approached the provincial governor's compound, Captain Groberg observed an individual walking close to the formation. When the individual made an abrupt turn towards the formation, he noticed an abnormal bulge underneath the individual's clothing. Selflessly placing himself in front of the brigade, one of the brigade commanders, Captain Groberg rushed forward using his body to push the suspect away from the formation. Simultaneously, he ordered another member of the security detail to assist him with removing the suspect. At this time, Captain Groberg confirmed the bulge was a suicide vest, and with complete disregard for his life, Captain Groberg again, with the assistance of the other members of the security detail, physically pushed the suicide bomber away from the formation. Upon falling, the suicide bomber detonated his explosive vest outside of the perimeter of the formation, killing four members of the formation and wounding numerous others. The blast from the first suicide bomb caused the suicide vest of a previously unnoticed second suicide bomber to detonate prematurely with minimal impact on the formation. Captain Groberg's immediate actions to push the first suicide bomber away from the formation significantly minimized the impact of the coordinated suicide bomber's attack on the formation, saving the lives of his comrades and several senior leaders. Captain Groberg's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty at the risk of life are keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 4th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, and the 4th Infantry Division, and the United States Army.
The plaque will now be unveiled, inducting Captain Groberg into the Hall of Heroes. At this time, Secretary Carter will present the Medal of Honor flag. On 23rd October 2002, Public Law 107-248, Section 8143, established the Medal of Honor flag to recognize service members who have distinguished themselves by gallantry in action above and beyond the call of duty. The Medal of Honor flag commemorates the sacrifice and bloodshed for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor by an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. The light blue color with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon. Thank you, Secretary Carter, Secretary Fanning, General Milley, and Sergeant Major of the Army Daily. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Florent A. Groberg. Secretary Carter, Acting Secretary Fang, Joe Milley, Sergeant Major Daly, Members of Congress, Medal of Honor recipients present, and I here today, Gold Star families, distinguished guests, my brothers and sisters in the Armed Forces, Armed Services, Mom, Dad, Carson, and my family friends. Good morning. So. If you know me, you understand the fact that I do not like to write speeches. But I figured that I probably needed to write something today. So bear with me. This is the first time I've ever done any type of speech while looking at notes. But this comes from the heart, and I wanted to make sure that my words were correct. So today I stand in front of you as a proud American. Grateful to have been given the opportunity to serve and wear the colors from our country in a time of war. I was blessed to be surrounded, trained, mentored, led, and followed by our, some of our nation's greatest warriors. I am honored, beyond honored, to become a member of the Hall of Heroes. I was given the opportunity to spend a lot of time with a lot of our Medal of Honor recipients such as 10 year old Foley, retired, who graciously invited me to his home with his wife and just made me understand what a true honor it is to be part of this fraternity. But this could not have happened without the mentorship and guidance of my brothers and sisters. Here today, it is important for me to highlight a few of you. So the first person I'd like to highlight is Sergeant First Class, retired Corey Staley. If you can stand up, please. There you are. I was a brand new second lieutenant. I had just graduated out of uh, Ranger School in October of 2009 when I drove as fast as I could across the country to Fort Carson in order to deploy and serve my country because my unit was already in combat. 
And uh, well, I got there pretty quick, and when I got there, I realized I didn't know anything about anything. I was green as it gets, and I was in combat in one of the most kinetic places in the world, and I was in charge of leading men. That man right there took me in. He showed me patience and strength. He allowed me to lead in my own way, but always guided me in the correct path. He talked to me, he listened to me, he taught me. He was the NCO that you need as a young officer in order to become successful. Most importantly, he allowed me to be the right leader at that time to bring home our boys. The next person is another NCO, is Sergeant First Class Brent. Brent. Brink was, is the epitome of, of the NCO Corps. His leadership molded our team, a team that was part of August 8, 2012, the team that protected Brigadier General Mingus, at the time Colonel Mingus. Uh, he was there with me, to my right, to my left, in front of me, in my, to the rear, at all times. He made sure that I was doing the right things at all times. He understood that sometimes I would get overwhelmed with the movements, and he would look at me and say, sir, I got this. I've been doing this for a while. He was exactly what I needed. He was exactly what our team needed. He was exactly what Command Sergeant Major Griffin needed. He was exactly what Colonel Mingus at the time, not bringing your General Mingus, needed. You're the right leader, and for that, I will always be thankful. And I'm going to make, because I know we have a time crunch here, but I'm going to tell you one thing. All you guys, please stand up. Uh, Balrama, C Corps, O Chart, and if you can, <laughs> Mahoney. You talk about family. You know, I I was born and had wonderful parents and uh, wonderful family, but uh, uh, when you deploy and you're in combat, these, these individuals become your brothers. You will do anything for them. And you all are. Mahoney, I'm, you, you, I never had to worry about a thing about Mahoney. Mahoney squared me away quite a few times. He was sarcastic at times. <laughs> Typical sergeant that looks at a lieutenant and, you know, asks him to do something, he'd do it. A little smirk. <laughs> I had uh, Balderrama, who I owe my life to, as well as Brinks. Balderrama saved my life. Simple. I would have died that day. I was bleeding out. And he kept me awake. He gave me a tourniquet. And, um, you know, and for that, I, don't, I can't even say thank you. That's not enough. C Corps and O Chart. <laughs> PFCs. I mean, the, unbelievable. Guys that go in Afghanistan, you know, and, and young and, and, and just so proud, and you tell them, hey, I need you to do this. On that day, I switched everything. I told, I told Ochart, hey, you're no longer at the top of the diamond. You're at the rear of the diamond. And if we do, if something happens, you take the, you take the colonel down, you take him to safety. I don't care what he says to you. You are the boss now. And all he says, Roger that, sir. <laughs> and he did that. c -Corps? Hey, c -Corps, I'm going to need you to move to the front with Brink. Even though the entire tour, you've been next to Command Sergeant Major Griffin. He looked at me, didn't like it. He said, Roger that, sir. You move it up there. I'm so proud of you guys. It's an honor, honor to have served with you and your brothers for life. And I love you guys. Last person I'd like to recognize on my team is the one of the greatest, if not the greatest man, after my father, in the world, uh, Brigadier General Mingus. My mentor, and the greatest leader I've ever served under, and I'm going to be very short with this because you're a man of few words, sir. And I wrote it down, I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. The way he led made everyone want to be better. His personality made our job easy. I would have and still would lay down my life for you, sir.
Thank you. Now, Sli, the most important people here and not here. Command Sergeant Major Griffin, Major Kennedy, Major Gray, and Reggie Abdel Fattah. On August 8, 2015, our country lost four incredible Americans, four men that made the ultimate sacrifice, four individuals that changed lives around them for the better, four true heroes for which this medal and honor belongs to. I carry them in my heart, I carry them in my body, and I carry them in my soul every single day. I miss them. And I understand that my responsibility now in this world is to live through them and to live for them and their families and to be better. This is my goal. You've heard it many times. It will be my goal until one day I lay down on their ground and I join them in heaven. And this honor also belongs to their families, which are here. If you could please stand up. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Gold star families. Get the Griff we have the Griffins, Kennedys, Grays, and unfortunately, uh, not here, but in our hearts, uh, the Abdel Fattahs. <laughs> they, you, you all represent what true perseverance stands for and what the American spirit truly is. I told you this, this is going off script, I told you this, and maybe recently, but the biggest fear I always had when I came back from Afghanistan, I had two. First was that you would not accept me because I was not able to bring everyone home. And second, that I could no longer do my job and bring you home, sir. I wanted that job and I wanted to be there till December, but I couldn't do it anymore. These were my two demons that I lived with on that specific day. But you, what you represent, the Gold Star families, is everything of what America is. Though I'm here today, and your loved ones are not, they are here in spirit with us, they are in my heart, they are in every one of my guys' hearts, every single person that was involved that day, they are with them and their families. But you still came to support us, still came to support me, and you still came to support each other. This honor is yours all yours. This medal, I carry it on my body. It is yours. It is for you. And I meet it from, the, from everything inside me. Thank you for being you. And I love you. In closing, I want to thank the Army. I want to thank my country. I want to thank God. Thank you for the opportunity to serve and wear this uniform. I, was, I will always do my best to better myself and represent our flag and nation with honor. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Groberg. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in the singing of the Army song. The words of the Army song could be found in your program.
March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, please pause for a moment at your seats to allow the official party to exit the auditorium. <laughs> 